I absolutely love that in the end, Palpatine won. I'm just, congratulations, man. You're fulfilling your destiny. Hey, I did a spoiler-free review just in case you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want spoilers. It should be popping up as a little card thing in uh, one of the top corners that you can click on just in case you don't want spoilers. I'm going to be talking heavily about spoilers in this video, so I don't want to ruin the movie for you just in case. So yeah, you've been warned. So I feel like right away if I were to be asked the question, did you like The Rise of Skywalker? My answer would be different based on whether I was taking this movie by itself or if I was being asked as the closure for the Skywalker saga. Because we were promised over and over again by JJ, Kathleen Kennedy, by Lucasfilm, Disney, this was wrapping up all the episodes, all three trilogies, this was the end of the Skywalker saga, and... I feel like if that was your goal, you really fucked up. And honestly, this film and the entire sequel trilogy has been nothing but disrespectful to the Skywalker line. All the Skywalkers are gone. Think about this. Palpatine messed with the Skywalkers for three generations, and he won. I mean, heck, even Palpatine's granddaughter took the life force of the last Skywalker and then took their name. Palpatine. My guy. Imagine this from Palpatine's perspective. He gets Anakin to turn to the dark side and force choke the shit out of his wife. Then as Vader, Palpatine gets him to just brutally torture his biological daughter to the point where Leia still remembers how brutal it was in her old age. By old age, 50s, but apparently that's old in the Star Wars universe. Gets Vader to just torment his son, chop off his hand, and then that's not enough. Palpatine isn't done. Via Snoke and pretending to be Darth Vader, he ends up corrupting Ben Solo since he was in Leia's womb and turning him to the dark side, turning him against his own uncle and destroying everything Luke worked for, and ends up making Luke a total hermit and giving up the Force. Luke freaking Skywalker, this guy. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. Yeah, right? Then he corners Leia into giving up the last of her life force to bring Ben Solo back to the light. Has Ben experienced one moment of joy via kissing Rey and then he dies after a Palpatine takes his life force and his last name. So now a Palpatine lives on, the Skywalker line is completely dead, and the Palpatine has the last name Skywalker and all the credit that goes along with it. This entire time, Palpatine's been playing 4D chess. Get wrecked, Skywalkers. Okay, because I have a lot of brain thoughts uh, about this film and I'm going to talk way too long, I'm going to make timestamps down below in the comment section just in case you only care about a particular plotline or character because I, I know you don't want to hear me ramble on for a half hour, which I'm, I'm sure I'm going to do. Also, because I know this is YouTube and the internet and you can only be on one end or the other. You can either just absolutely hate something or love it. And if you're in between, you're a, a terrible monster. I just want you to know that I am going to be saying things I liked and disliked because I, I guess I, I thought that was a normal adult thing where you can like and dislike something at the same time and that's okay. So if you absolutely love this film, I'm gonna teave you off by saying things I didn't like. And if you absolutely hated this movie, I'm gonna teave you off because I'm going to say things that I liked. That way, no one wins. Uh, unlike Kirk, I like no win situations. Makes me just so erect. So let's talk about Finn. I absolutely love that we confirmed in this film that Finn is force sensitive. Screw all you people that have been telling me for years, not everybody has to be force sensitive. Yeah. 
no shit, but there were way too many clues that Finn was Force-sensitive since The Force Awakens, and also in the canon book before The Force Awakens, which I found out not a lot of people read, but it's a, a really good read, and you should if you have time. And I know the popular opinion, at least among my friends, and I, I guess I'm assuming that my friends' opinions are popular because usually they're very, 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 very positive, <laughs> I've found. Uh, I'm actually uh, a negative person, according to them, which is interesting to me because I thought I was actually pretty positive about Star Wars, so I, I don't know what I am anymore. Anyways, I know the popular opinion was that when they were in the quicksand, Finn was going to tell Rey, I love you, or about his feelings, but I thought it was Finn telling Rey, hey, I'm actually force sensitive, I can use the force, I can feel the force, you know, I just wanted you to, to know. So now I expect future book comic canon to be Grandmaster Rey. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you like Rey, I'm not, I'm not laughing at you. I just love the idea of this 19 year old that has only been using the force for a year being a grandmaster when poor Anakin. How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Poor, poor Anakin. Anyways, I expect to see future canon where Finn is learning how to use the force and to become a Jedi, which I feel like a lot of us can agree, and maybe I'm speaking out of turn, um, that Finn should have been being trained to be a Jedi since The Force Awakens, and it was kind of a bitch move to have him with a lightsaber on the posters as misdirection. There's way too much evidence, and I understand for people that don't consume non-movie Star Wars canon, you don't know. I mean, I did a video where I actually talked about canon for Finn and talked about how, you know, he's not a, a janitor. Every every stormtrooper goes through the rotation of being a janitor and all these other duties. That's nothing. Finn wasn't a janitor stormtrooper, but a lot of people still throw that out in discussion. Well, he's a janitor. No, every stormtrooper cadet who's going through training rotates through this. Finn was actually the top of the top of stormtroopers, and he was so amazing that Phasma wanted him to be a, a leader. But that was never put across in the movies. And I was told, I've mentioned this a few times, uh, I, I talked about that, and people went, we don't want to hear about your fan fiction. And I was like, no, this is actual canon canon. This is canon in, in the books and in comics. But Disney just did such a shit job of showing Finn and what he truly is capable of in the movies. And I don't blame people. If you don't get that across in the movies, they, they should know by now you need to. Because too many people just think, oh, he was a shit stormtrooper that was a janitor. And they have no idea how amazing Finn was supposed to be. And I feel like that is strongly the fault of the writers. And Ryan Johnson, I realize that name triggers a lot of people. He really did a retread of Finn in The Last Jedi instead of bringing him forward or progressing his storyline. And I think I really love what J.J. did in The Rise of Skywalker with Finn. And I know that's because John Boyega campaigned heavily to J.J. I want you to do more with my character. I want you to progress my character more. Like I have, John was not happy with The Last Jedi. He's been very vocal about not liking those decisions that Ryan made. And I completely agree with him because Finn just, he just did the same thing he did in The Force Awakens. And it was really sad to waste such a good character. Although, I guess Disney's really good at wasting characters, which I will get into later. Knights of Ren. <sighs> Sith Troopers. Why do you do this, Disney? Why do you like to hurt us? So I really do expect them to continue on with Finn and other canon. We know they're not going to put him on a Disney Plus show, apparently, because John went in an interview said, yeah, no, you're not putting me on any Disney Plus live action TV show, which 
John, I get it because years ago being on television when you were a movie actor was death to your career. Television is the new thing. Streaming services, this isn't this isn't going to kill your career. It's it's going to lift it up. And I realize that's a very sharp change for a lot of actors where that wasn't a good transition for your career. It is nowadays. And I would actually love a series about Finn, personally. I like Finn, okay? Poe and Finn, of course, are a winning team. I really like Poe. I guess a lot of people don't. I like the decision to actually keep him alive because he was supposed to die in The Force Awakens. I feel like they shit on his character in The Last Jedi, but honestly, The Last Jedi kind of just <laughs> shit on a lot of people. Sorry, it, it did. It just... We're not here to talk about The Last Jedi, okay? Everybody, calm down. Calm down. The bromance between Poe and Finn I absolutely love. It is helped by the fact that Oscar, Isaac, and John are best friends in real life. They're besties, so that on-screen chemistry comes together. And I am really happy they kept Poe and Finn together. Poe being given leadership after Leia passes away and going to Finn and Finn wants to tell him something he wants to tell him about. Dio, speaking of another throwaway character. <sighs> Shouldn't have bought that toy. I love Poe trying to have this big moment of saying, hey, I can't do this by myself. I, I need you. And Finn trying to tell him about Dio and then stopping and being like, by the way, thank you, General. General. That was the cutest moment. I mentioned this in my spoiler-free review. The humor in The Rise of Skywalker was a lot better. It felt a lot more in line with Star Wars humor and not Marvel humor. And Ryan Johnson really went for MCU humor, where J.J dialed it back and, and did more of the, the Star Wars humor. And there is a difference. I know some people have argued about this. There legitimately is a difference. Uh, I guess I can make a video on that, highlighting the differences, but I feel like in this video it's not that necessary. I just wanted to say that I feel like the humor in this movie was more on par with a Star Wars film, and I really appreciate that. I don't need your mama jokes <laughs> in a Star Wars movie. I am really happy that Poe took over for Leia, and I am now wondering, just like we got Empire's End, which is a series of books, and we also got comics, of course, that deal with after Return of the Jedi and them trying to deal with cleaning up the Empire and there were still battles to be won. I kind of wonder if we're going to see the same thing here. Disney's gonna put out, I don't know, the final order, the first order ends, and a bunch of canon books and deal with Finn, Rey, and Poe taking out the First Order's hold on all of the galaxy, just like the Rebellion had to do with the Empire. I'm more than sure we're going to see a lot of announcements about that coming up really soon. Let's talk about Lando. How amazing is it that we had an OT character that was properly utilized? He didn't die. He didn't become a scumbag. He didn't go back to just being the same old self. He progressed as a human being. And I feel like he was the perfect balance. He was an old rebellion leader. He was respected by the younger generation. He had wisdom to give. He had help to give. But at the same time, he stepped back and realized, okay, this younger generation needs to step forward and do this. And I'm going to help them the best I can as the, the sage, as the, the wise old leader. And I really appreciate what they did with Lando, a hundred, a hundred percent. They were so, so respectful with Lando and I really appreciate that. Seeing Lando in the Falcon, especially with Chewie, was so rewarding and so majestic. Although, it makes me think um, that line in Solo <laughs> is now a little dark. Chewie, honestly, Chewie was the only thing that made me tear up in this movie. When he was grieving over Leia's death, it, wrecked me. I legitimately teared up. Just his cries, him just thrashing around, him freaking out. He's a Wookiee. His lifespan is really long. And yeah, he's lost a lot of friends from other species that don't live as long as his does. But he's lost Han, Luke, and Leia in a short amount of time. And 
you could see that grief in the film and it was heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking let's go to han my guess is leia used the last of her life force to not only call out to ben to bring him to the light side but also bring forth uh, han's consciousness from the afterlife the afterworld i can get more into that in a separate video how that would be possible but i honestly think through the force she used the last of it to do that and i think it was absolutely beautiful i think that was so well done Harrison Ford in that scene, he was present, <laughs> which for Harrison Ford, if you've been watching him lately, he's a very grumpy old man, which is fine. He's earned it. He's been working for a really long time. So him being kind of at the end of his life, and I know that sounds so mean, I'm so sorry. And him kind of phoning in a lot of things is to be expected at this point. But here, it, it just, it, it was beautiful him replicating that moment on Starkiller base and touching his face and that line, I know what I have to do, and Han telling him that he can and that he's his son. I just, that, it's just a beautiful moment. It was a very well done, beautiful, emotional moment. And I did really appreciate it. Leia, on the other hand, I don't think this is a popular opinion. I think this is something that's going to upset a lot of people, what I'm about to say. I don't feel like it was very respectful. And I've heard from a lot of my friends that they thought it was beautiful and that they did a great job. I personally don't feel that way. I understand that they only had so much footage to use of Carrie Fisher and there was only so much they could do, but I could really tell that they were struggling and trying to fit things around what they had. Also, I know they were hinting that her time out in open space exposed without protection caused her to have health issues. And it was in the comics, we also see a little bit in the books that she is very weak. So I get her passing and using her last bit of life to bring her son back to the light. But at the same time, you're in your early 50s and you never got a break. Like, I am so sorry, Leia. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry this was your life, that your husband wasn't a good dad or husband and went back to his own life of smuggling that your son was corrupted since he was in your womb and went to the dark side and that you had to fight in two wars and the one thing you truly loved, politics, you were thrown out because someone that was your friend exposed you were the, the daughter of Vader. I'm, I'm really sorry this was your life. Kinda sucks. The flashback to Luke and Leia training though, the CGI, I think was wonderful. Leia still looked a little off. It's weird because Luke looked amazing. Leia still looked a little, little wonky. But I wish we were at a point in technology where we could cheaply and convincingly make a movie based off of CGI of post Return of the Jedi Luke and Leia and them training and the shenanigans they got up to. It, I would be beyond ecstatic if they could do that, but I realize we're not there yet and the expense and the just ugh, awfulness of it just would not work. I find it interesting that Leia's forced vision was at the end of her Jedi path, her son would die. Force visions are very tricky. So she decided to stop training as a Jedi because she thought her son would die at the end of her Jedi path. But at the end of her Jedi path, her son did die. Her final thing as a Jedi was to bring her son to the light side and bring the consciousness of Han forward to speak with her son. So you can't trust those Force visions. They're gonna screw you no matter what. I really, really loved Leia's lightsaber. I expect they're going to start selling that if they haven't done that already, if it's not already listed uh, in Star Wars merchandise that you can buy it. Her lightsaber was pretty sweet. I really, really liked seeing a well put together Luke in this movie, even though he was a force ghost. I feel like that's the Luke we should have gotten in life. If you look at Luke and the OT, and I understand people change, completely understand that. Heaven knows I've been alive long enough to know, based on what decade of your life you're in, you change. But you can't 
telling you it wasn't weird to see some one of the most optimistic, happy, gung-ho people to then turn into what Luke turned into. And I understand Ryan Johnson didn't want to do a retread and he didn't want to have Luke from the expanded universe that Disney got rid of. But Ryan, you're a writer, you're a director, you could have found a way to do that and make it a unique story that wasn't something we saw before. So at the very least, seeing Luke be this wise, happy, optimistic Jedi Master, even if it's as a Force ghost, it was nice to see a little bit. So I guess, JJ, thank you for that. I wish we could have gotten that with him being alive, but you know, whatever. His wig, on the other hand, I don't know if I dig that wig. It did not seem like a good wig for Luke, but I'm willing to, to let it go. Him and Leia as Force Ghost was incredibly beautiful, and I did love that in the end, especially that they had her in her A New Hope outfit. All right, let's talk about Kylo. This is where I'm probably going to get a little bit upset. I don't know yet. I guess we'll see where this, where this takes me. Um, I feel like Adam Driver had the least amount of lines in episode nine than he did in the other two films, which in itself isn't bad because Adam Driver is such an amazing actor that what he conveys through his eyes, face, even body language is amazing. And to Ryan Johnson's credit, he really utilized that. The fact that Adam Driver is great with facial expressions, where JJ's more about his presence as just a, a bigger person. Honestly, Kylo Ren, and I know this has been said multiple times, especially by me, was what Anakin should have been in the prequels. Somebody really quick get a time machine. Let's create some paradoxes. Let's fuck the universe up. Kylo is incredibly tragic, and I think having him die in the end was one of the dumbest things JJ could do. You had him experience a moment of happiness for once, and then he dies. And if you are into the other canon, especially if you're following the miniseries Rise of Kylo Ren, you know that he did not destroy Luke's temple, he did not kill Luke's students, and that Palpatine via Snoke was manipulating him and pretending to be there for him, and it was almost a pedo vibe. It's, it's creepy. And you learn that even his life beforehand with his mom and dad wasn't great. And he's had a lot of trauma. And so we are learning about all this stuff that created Kylo Ren and how tragic it was. And that he is not, he wasn't the one that did a lot of things that were accused of him. Now, on the other hand, I, I do agree he killed his dad. He did some screwed up things. Yeah, I'm not saying Kyle Ren is a great guy. I'm not saying, hey, Space Hitler's the greatest. What I'm saying is Kylo Ren had a very screwed up life and was manipulated since he was in the womb. And just having him die was a really shitty end for him. We've, we've seen that already, JJ. At the very least, even... and. I'm not a shipper, okay? I don't care about Raylo. I, I don't care if they're together or not. I just want to get that out of the way because for some reason, when people see that I'm a woman, yes, by the way, I'm a woman, they think I'm a, a Raylo shipper. And, no, I don't care. I do not care who Kylo puts his dick in. It's, it's, it is not my concern, but it's just crazy to me. You couldn't leave Kylo Ben alive to work on redeeming the shit he did. And that would have been a completely different story. I feel like a lot of people don't know what to do with the villain. Oh, well, once he redeems himself, he has to die because we don't know what to do after that. Because there's a very real difference between redemption and forgiveness. And Ben would have a lot to do to get forgiveness and to work on that for what he did. And maybe he never could, but he should have been given that option. And think how much money, Disney, you love money, you could have made on future canon, books, comics, of Ben, with the help of Ray even, trying to write everything that he did. 
you've missed a, a great opportunity. Instead, you decided, well, well, you know how we're gonna end the Skywalker saga? We're just gonna fucking kill them all. Why? Why? Something I'm really, really, really happy about, Kylo beat Rey for once in a lightsaber duel. I love that she's just coming at him and he doesn't want to hurt her. He doesn't want to kill her. He's more just making sure she doesn't land a killing blow and he overpowers her as he should be. We have seen from other canon how Bamf Kylo Ren is. He is incredibly powerful and yeah, they're part of the dyad so they both have incredible power. Uh, I'll get a little bit into that too. Uh, but I, I loved that he just fucking overpowered her. And then, of course, she got a, a sneak uh, stab in because Kylo's mommy died. Which, in case you don't know, by the way, when Chewie fired his blaster bolt at him, his um, bowcaster bolt, he actually was trying to kill Kylo. And the only reason why Kylo didn't die was because he used the force. So there's there's a fun fact for you. I don't know how that fits into this review, but now you know. Oh, speaking of Raylos, I actually sat next to some Raylos and when they kissed, they were freaking out so excited. And then once Kylo died, they were slamming their arms down and just freaking out. It was a roller coaster ride sitting next to hardcore Raylos and I feel really bad for them. Ray, I think Ray was more likable in this film. I'm not criticizing you if you like Ray. I, I don't dislike her. I don't like her. She's just, she's just kind of there. I can think of other characters I like more, but her being the granddaughter of Palpatine and part of the dyad explains a lot, which probably pisses off a lot of people that wanted her to be the child of nobodies, even though Kylo explained technically you were because your dad chose to do shit all with his genetics and kept you away from the Senate. So from that perspective, it, it does make sense. And it's not totally reneging on what Ryan Johnson set up, but I, I like it that she's part of a dyad and she's Palpatine's granddaughter. And that's why she has this God tier power. I understand that this is dangerous waters to be in, but I love that she was Palpatine's granddaughter. I feel like it added a lot to it, unfortunately, and I don't know why. And I'm not a business person, mind you. I am a scientist. My job is as a scientist. I work with bacteria. So keep that in mind when I say this. I don't understand why you spend so much money on one of the biggest franchises ever and you do not plan out the sequel trilogy from start to finish. I do not understand how you just let each director decide the story going forward. And this isn't an argument. This isn't an opinion you can have with me. They have directly said it. The sequel trilogy was not completely planned out. And that is reckless and stupid. And you could tell in this film. And nothing against Kathleen Kennedy. She needs to be fired and someone else needs to be put in place that will manage the Star Wars property better. She did not do a good job. But I'm going to get away from that because that is a very dangerous topic because anytime you don't talk about girl power, apparently you're a sexist. So let's uh, shift it to something else. I thought it was hilarious that a Palpatine was the straight good person and the Skywalker was the bad guy. I wish from the beginning they knew they were gonna make Rey a Palpatine and they played on that more throughout the sequel trilogy. I think that would have been amazing. Ray's healing ability, I like that they had the forethought in The Mandalorian to have Baby Yoda use that ability. We know in the EU it existed and a little bit in Star Wars canon under Disney. And I feel like they put it in The Mandalorian to make people a little bit easier about it being used in episode nine. And I enjoy that type of planning. That's what the storyboard group is for. If you're interested in the voices that Rey heard when she was facing off against Palpatine, the Jedi past, it was Anakin, it was Luke, it was Obi-Wan, it was Qui-Gon, Mace, Yoda, Kanan. Uh, we also had Ahsoka, and then there were some female Jedi from the Clone Wars and from the prequels that I just don't care about, but those were the voices. 
I really liked her yellow lightsaber and it being made into her staff, so I'm guessing it's on both ends. I think that's amazing. I love that she chose yellow and uh, it fits her fighting style. I feel kind of bad for Luke and Leia's lightsaber being buried on Tatooine. I'm guessing at some point Disney's going to release canon where somebody finds it. Ooh, since we're talking about Rey, is anyone else excited that Palpatine was given someone the D? Especially since it was this Palpatine and not this Palpatine. That lucky lady. Now that I know that uh, Palpatine is up for that stuff, I really hope that we eventually get a story of Palpatine banging some woman and what happened with that. I'm more than sure he did it because of his obsession with Vader's connection to his children and him turning to the light. So he was thinking, oh, I need a family bond of myself. Maybe he didn't even spadoinkle a woman. He just injected the semen. Who knows with Palpatine, but I'd be interested to know about that because I'm creepy. I like that Palpatine had snow clones and that explains all that, that he was manipulating everything because he couldn't use his own body. I'm not sure, my dude, why you keep using force lightnings. Three trilogies in a row, force lightning has fucked you hard. Palpatine, it's time to stop. Honestly, I wish there was more to that fight, but in the end, I'm Palpatine won. Rain ended up striking him down. The last of the Skywalkers are done. Rays out in the galaxy. Palpatine's line lives, so I guess using all that force lightning did work out for you in the end. I really hope he has more contingency plans for after he died died in the sequel trilogy and he just just nukes the entire galaxy at this point palpatine just nuke the entire galaxy all right here's some random bits because this video is already way too long i'm really sorry knights of ren raise your hand if you knew disney was gonna blue ball you with them once more we hardly got them for what okay kylo reforging his helmet by the way that helmet was sweet uh them on pasana capturing Chewie and them them half-heartedly attacking Ben. <sighs> Why do you do this? Although, Trudgeon's my favorite. I hope it's your favorite too. By the way, did you know that they all can use the force or touch the shadow as they call it? So that's pretty cool. Sith Troopers, I feel like we got blue balled as well with. I don't feel like they, they did a whole lot. JJ, I don't know what it is with you and Death Star tech, but of course every Star Destroyer that Palpatine had created had planet killing abilities on it because JJ just gets boners over Death Star tech. He can't, he just can't help himself. It's just, it's JJ. How dare they kill Snap? Screw you. Although I love the Wedge cameo. And by the way, if you want to experience more of Wedge post the OT, Resistance were born. He's pretty heavy in that book, heavily featured, and I love it, and they did a great job with him. So if you want more Wedge, there you go. It's, it's a good book in general, actually. Although you'll love Snap a bit more for him to just die. Hux being a spy and just wanting to take Kylo down was kind of expected. I love how brutal Pride was with him, just fucking killing him. Pride was great. I loved that he was an old Imperial serving Palpatine and continued to do so. I liked Pride. I feel like he wasn't heavily featured, but he was enough where I'm like, dang, dude, you're a, you're a bamf. Janna was a cool character. I really loved in the end that Lando's gonna help this orphan find her family. Zori Bliss was fine as well. Dio, eh. eh. I thought I was gonna like him more, but I didn't. He was just, eh. I think Rose was utilized very well in this film. She was there, but not enough and not obnoxiously to make you feel ooh 
why are you doing this? So I feel like Rose was very, very well used in this film. There was no Phasma. Of course there wasn't a Phasma. You guys make awesome comics and a book from her and then she's just gone. I'm really hoping that we get a second Phasma book, Phasma Reloaded. And we find out that she did survive The Last Jedi and she finally was like, fuck this shit. I'm not going back to the First Order. Screw you guys. I'm out. I would pay a lot of money to read that book. So yeah, I'm sure I have a ton of other thoughts, but this video is already way too long. I'll be releasing more The Rise of Skywalker videos, so come back for more. And let me know what you thought about the movie in the comment section down below. Because that's probably the only way you'd be able to let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe for more Star Wars videos.